You're actually creating buttercream that looks like you just carved an avocado. Shh. Don't spoil the episode. It's 2020, so from now on, I'm only eating avocado toast and healthy breakfasts. Is that your New Year's resolution? That's my New Year's. It's the same one as last year, but this year I'm keeping it. Happy New Year! It's 2020, and thank you for joining us. You guys, it's 2020. I should start my day with avocado toast. I feel like I should be in like some futuristic like metal outfit. To make my giant avocado toast cake, I baked five pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter in one rectangular pan. Whenever I make a cake that doesn't have a lot of cake, I'm always like looking at my notes to correct myself. I'm like, does that say five and not 25? <laughs> this part of the new year is not a new me. I'm gonna do the same thing I've always done. I'm going to use a ruler and a serrated knife to level my cake, and then I'm gonna flip it over and remove the caramelization from the bottom. But I wanna do this very sparingly because it's called avocado toast. I just wanna skim off that main sort of caramelized skin at the bottom of the cake, but leave some caramelized cake. And this way, my toast will look toasted. When I get toast and it's just kind of like warm but not toasted, I'm like, that's not toast. You know, we were promised flying cars in 2020 and if you promise me toast, I want toast. I don't want bread. Yeah, that's as upsetting as the flying cars for sure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's a great loss. I made myself a template uh, of a slice of bread. It's just basically kind of like, I'm thinking of like a big sourdough loaf. You know how the bread is kind of like oval? So it's kind of like an oval with one side that's more straight because that would be the bottom of the bread. I'm gonna lay my template onto my rectangle of cake and use a small serrated knife to cut around it. Now I'm going to simple sear up my cake with the help of Sir Squeeze. Yes. Ah, we renegotiated his contract for another year of how to cake but he started threatening that he'd go to all the other cake channels and yeah, like you're not the only one and he was, he's difficult, you know? Now I want to flip my cake over and I'm gonna ice the side of the cake with clear piping gel. I don't wanna see a buttercream line between the toast and its crust. So I'm using clear piping gel because we won't see it, but I need it to help the fondant stick to the cake. Hmm. I measured the perimeter of my giant a piece of toast. I should have done this before adding the piping gel. <laughs> so now that I've cleaned off my fabric measuring tape, I'm going to roll out my tan fondant a bit longer than that measurement. I want to texture the band at the center a little bit. So I'm just kind of using two small fondant rolling pins and sort of pinching the fondant. You know how like a loaf of bread on the top is often sort of slashed when they bake it? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna carefully, very carefully use my really long yardstick to cut one side of that band in a straight line. Now I'm going to pick up my band of fondant and I'm going to wrap it around the cake, making sure that that thicker textured part is at the top portion of my toast and then wrapping it around and sticking it to the cake creating a seam at the bottom in the center of my toast. I forgot to say I did something. So after I roll out the band, I'm gonna use my turkey skinator. No, that's not what I did. Oh, I didn't do that. Why did I think I did that? Uh, too much champagne last week, see? That's why I'm on this resolution. Now I need to trim away the excess fondant that's sticking up along the sides of the toast. If you're in a warm kitchen, if it's hot where you are, congrats, still winter. You might wanna chill your cake for a moment before you cut the fondant flush, because sometimes when your fondant is soft and you cut like this, it sort of drags and pulls it. We don't want that, we want a clean cut. Sometimes I wish I lived in another hemisphere, because wouldn't it be great if New Year's happened in summer? No. Yes. No, no Why? snow in New Year's. Why would you, why? I get snowy Christmas, but why do you need a snowy New Year's? Summer is the middle of life. <laughs> middle of life cannot be New Year's. New Year's has to be in winter, because then spring comes, which is like growing up, and summer, and then fall, which is you being old, and then everything becomes snowy, which is you dying. 
but it's the cycle of life. Okay, that got real deep. Who's enjoying their summer New Year's right now? Leave a comment below. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears. I'm not done with this toast, but we have very important things to do for our avocados. Now, I technically could have just colored some buttercream to look like guacamole or mashed up avocado, but I really love to have avocado toast that's smashed. So I obsessed over how to get this look. The first thing I need to do is get two bowls of Italian meringue buttercream. In one bowl, I'm going to start adding avocado food coloring. How perfect. It's like they knew I was going to make avocado toast. Of course, I had an avocado as a model. I cut my model open and I'm basically just going to stand here and add food coloring and mix until I feel like it's right. I also had um, some leftover yellow buttercream, and this is the perfect place to use it. Then I decided to add some leaf green. Then I even added a little, like just a dot of red because when you add the opposite color, it helps to tone down a color. I keep mixing until I'm happy and now I'm gonna move on and try and mix that yellowy green for my avocado. So to my buttercream, I add some yellow buttercream, and then I added some of the green buttercream I've already created to create that greenish yellow. It's not at all a bright yellow. It's like, avocados are actually beautiful because it's a natural, like, ombre. If you look at it, it goes from like yellow, green, yellow out to green. It's beautiful. This is how I decided to recreate an avocado. I have egg-shaped pens that I've used on the channel before. First, take my green buttercream, scoop it into an egg-shaped pen, and then I'm going to smooth it up along the sides and the bottom of the pen with a spoon. Once that buttercream is chilled enough that I can add another layer of buttercream without blending it all together, I scoop in my yellowy green avocado buttercream and do the same thing with a spoon. I smooth it all the way around the pans and along the bottom. So now in these half egg pans, you can see sort of a ring of green and a ring of yellow. And now I'm gonna put these back in the fridge once again. I need them to chill completely. I'm gonna further texture the sides of the toast, so the fondant portion of the toast, with my turkey skinator because I want to imagine that this slice of toast came out of a beautiful loaf of sourdough that was slashed on the top. Now I need to paint my crust. So I'm going to mix together some ivory, brown, and taupe food coloring with food grade alcohol. Taupe has recently become one of my favorite food colorings. What color is taupe? It's like a beigey gray. It's actually not very pretty when I squeeze it out. Uh, pardon my French, but it looks like bird poop. And I find when I add it to these natural tones, it really helps tone it down. Mm, that's why you love it. I really like it. It's it's Ivory's competitor. Whoa. Yeah, we're gonna have like a UFC battle. <laughs> Ivory and Chill in the race. Uh, everyone's gonna watch. I think you used like a bed top full of Ivory since this channel Guaranteed. started. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Just keep painting your toast until you're happy with the color. Different breads have different um, darknesses, so paint it however you like it. The next thing I need to do is create that sort of cornmeal bottom that you see at the bottom of loaves of bread. That's basically what they do when they're baking the dough to stop it from sticking. So to create my cornmeal, I'm using some shortbread cookies in a little food processor. I'm just gonna grind them up until they're like powder. And now I'm just gonna glue them to the bottom of my cake. The paint was still wet, so they did stick to the bottom of the cake. And I'll use a spatula to help sort of press them up against the fondant and also to scrape some away. And now comes the important part where I try to remove this buttercream, but have it remain as one solid sort of shell. So I called my new friend, Bernadette. Remember Bernadette? She's amazing. And then I'm gonna use Bernadette to carefully heat them up. I just want to heat up the pan enough that the inner layer of the buttercream melts and gets soft so I can remove the rest of it. I don't want to overheat it at all. This is the part that made me the most nervous. 
I was confident that I could color the buttercream, I was confident that I could put it into the pan, but I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get it out without cracking it or melting it entirely. I want to take a chef's knife and slice through buttercream as if it's avocado. <laughs> These are the moments when I think to myself, why did you attempt to do this? Like, what if this doesn't work out? Uh, but it worked out. It was amazing. I'm so impressed. Yes, some of the, I mean, it's just buttercream. It's not going to stand up. So after I cut them, some of the slices collapsed, but that's fine. Because avocado is like that too. That's like cool. a ripe avocado is delicate. Your eyes are shining since you started are they? talking about this. Yeah. Oh my God, I loved it so much. I, you know, I, I admitted, I confessed last year in 2019 that one of the problems with me and how to cake it is, anytime I make a cake that I'm confident I could just get through with no hiccups, I feel guilty feel bad, yeah. and then I do something to make it harder for myself. So instead of just mixing buttercream that looks like guacamole and putting it on, I'm like, no. I have to do something else. And this is what I decided to do. But I'm happy because I love it. And it's so perfect. When else would I use this technique? Like sure. I can't think of no, when I would do this. Yeah. And I think it's also why all of you subscribe to How to Cake It. <laughs> Did you try to wink? Yeah, what was it? It was a <laughs> catastrophe. I, I feel like I winked my mouth instead of my eye. Let me try that again. And if you haven't subscribed, I know that you were impressed by that and you're gonna subscribe right now. By the avocado and not the wink, right? Yeah, no, not the wink. <laughs> <laughs> the wink lost some people. <laughs> she can't even wink. Uh, I've decided to season my avocado toast with sea salt, cracked black pepper, and chili flakes. And I'm doing this because None of those are actually real. Yeah, it would be really gross if I used the real thing. It also wouldn't be to scale because they're too small for this toast. So to create sea salt, I'm using rock candy, just clear rock candy that I'm cutting off the sticks and then further chopping. It can be hard to chop, so you can also toss it into a Ziploc bag and use a mallet and bang it up. And that will give you some nice coarse crystals that look like sea salt. I have some black dragees and I put them into a magic bullet and pulse them to crack them up. Crushed up the dragees, you could see too much white. So what I decided was to create just a little bit of black paint with black food coloring and food grade alcohol. And I'm gonna carefully coat my dragees with this paint and then spread them out onto a paper towel to dry. And I've decided to make chili flakes with dried cranberries. The unfortunate part is you need to make the seeds from gum paste. <laughs> so you need to hand make the seeds. Before I showcase my avocado toast, I need to know if you like my t-shirt. Look at it, can you see yourself in it? It's so reflective, eh? Yeah. It really is. This is this month's Cake Tea Club Tea. We also have something really special going on this year because it's 2020. Any of our Cake Tea Club, Sprinkle Service, or Deluxe memberships will come with the opportunity to win one of five golden tickets. These tickets will get you an exclusive private live stream with me. I mean, it will just be me and the five winners of the golden ticket. I'm like Willy Wonka. I need my own name. I'm Yoli Yonka. No, it's terrible, I know. <laughs> it's time to top my toast so I can eat it for breakfast. You could actually eat this cake for breakfast too, right? Yeah. But no, no, 2020, avocado toast for breakfast. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you wanna see more amazing cakes, click here and here. Do you like those wheels? It's oh, yeah. 2020. You see that? <laughs> more cake. Okay, let's go get some avocado. Yeah, see? Are you craving avocado? Yeah, I know. I need to eat avocado now. <laughs> at least we're craving a healthy food. Three to four months. Look at us.